Congress and all government agencies are working today after lawmakers managed to avoid a government shutdown over the weekend. Yeah, that's right. The stopgap measure ensures funding through mid-November, so just around the corner. But some conservative Republicans are pushing to remove House Speaker Kevin McCarthy for cutting a deal at all with Democrats. McCarthy was on Face the Nation yesterday with Margaret, where he addressed the move led by Florida Republican Matt Gates. You know, this is personal with Matt. Bring it on. Let's get over with it and let's start governing. Congressional correspondent Scott McFarland joins us now, as you can see on the big screen from Capitol Hill. Uh, Scott, good to see you. So walk us through something. How serious of a threat does McCarthy face and how serious of a threat does Matt Gates face that then he might owe things to the Democrats to get them on board and not get him kicked out? <laughs> This is quite a thing, Lilligan and Tony. You've heard of the quiet before the storm. This is like the opposite. This is a bunch of noise after the shutdown storm ended. It seems inevitable, if not imminent, Florida Republican Matt Gates will bring some type of challenge, some type of motion to oust McCarthy from his speakership. It seems like a near certainty based on what he's saying. Whether it's a credible or legitimate threat to McCarthy is an open-ended question we brought to McCarthy a short while ago. We asked him if he needed Democratic support to withstand it or if he was concerned about it and he was effusing confidence that he has the support of his conference, he doesn't deem this to be a threat. Of course, that's exactly what you'd want to say if you're trying to knock back a threat from one of your fellow Republicans. Um, there's a fundamental dynamic that's worth mentioning. The U.S. House is to spend this week passing more of those appropriations bills, more of those bills Congressman Gates is champion, single topic bills to fund the government before this 45-day window closes and we're back at a shutdown standoff again. But McCarthy is at a minimum being bombarded with questions about Gates if he's not being distracted fundamentally by them. So, Scott, let's talk about the, uh, the continued funding that was secured through this bipartisan effort. It's a stopgap spending bill. It only covers 45 days, which means it will run out before Thanksgiving. We'll do all this again unless the sticking points can be unstuck, as it were. So what needs to get done to avoid another problem in 45 days? And though they've passed this 45-day measure, Tony, the fundamentals, the, the baseline issues here haven't changed at all. There are Republicans, a good number of them, by the dozens, who want to significantly cut federal spending, who are insistent on language in these bills that Democrats will not stomach and that will not pass the Senate. Things that would defund some social safety net programs, that would defund climate change initiatives, government diversity programs. They want to get back at doing the things they know the Senate won't sign off on. That's the trajectory we're beginning over the next 45 days. But there are two big components of this short-term spending deal worth emphasizing. First of all, there is no money for the Ukraine war effort. That was a sticking point among House Republicans. They had a lot of opposition there, so there's no Ukraine money in there. And there are hawks and Ukraine supporters who say they need to get to that before the 45 days is up. They need to get a bill to get money to Ukraine. That's going to be a mess. There's also money in this bill for disaster relief funding. That's been approved for hurricane-ravaged Florida, flood-destroyed Vermont, and wildfire-decimated California and Hawaii. That was approved. Otherwise, this is a budgeter's dream. Everything stays the same. Easy to do the numbers on this. Federal spending from 2023 continues for 45 days. Scott, you were talking about the noise around the storm of the possible shutdown over the weekend. Democratic Congressman Jamal Bowman is, of New York is being investigated for allegedly pulling the fire alarm when Democrats <laughs> were looking to stall the vote. Um, the noise included an alarm. Yeah. yeah. Talk to us about you know, where that stands and what is he saying? There is a review underway by House administrators, the House Republican majority of the House Administration Committee, which tends to the matters of Capitol Hill, has launched a review of this. We've been talking with Capitol Police and federal authorities about whether they have an investigation going. They're not commenting on that. But to investigate a sitting member of Congress is likely a process based on past practices that might take some time before they can move on it. But this was such a profound thing. Congressman Bowman from New York, a former middle school principal, pulling a fire alarm and forcing the evacuation of the Cannon House office building at a sensitive moment when Democrats were very much trying to hold off a vote on a matter involving yeah. that continuing resolution. His statement is that he's embarrassed, that he was unaware that you know, pulling that alarm wouldn't open a door he wanted to get out of. But we'll see what happens next with Congressman Jamal Bowman.
All right, somebody familiar with uh, alarms in, in, in hallways. Yes. Scott, thank you very much.